Richard A. Foreman and our staff, I am pleased to bring you greetings and am honored to officially begin our commencement exercises. Please rise for the procession of candidates for graduation led by the Color Guard. We ask you to remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, and until the Color Guard leaves the stage. For your safety, the theater has emergency exits located in the rear of the theater behind you, along the aisles on each side. Please not note which exit is closest to your seat location.
Mr. Morris, who will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dejan. Deborah Kluvos, who will now lead us in the national anthem. occasion, the Clara Barton Class of 2019 graduation ceremony. At this time, it 
is my pleasure to introduce our principal, Dr. Richard A. Foreman. Thank you. Good morning, parents, guardians, extended family, distinguished faculty, honored guests, and the reason why we are assembled at this beautiful venue today, Queens College, is to celebrate our graduating seniors, the class of June 2019. My name is Dr. Richard A. Foreman, and I am honored and humbled to have served as the principal of Clara Barton High School for the past 12 and a half years. It is even more meaningful to me as I have an emotional attachment to this very auditorium as I graduated from Queens College many years ago, or should I say many decades ago. I am uh, delivering the annual principal's message with the dual sentiments of joy and pride. During the past four years, I've had the privilege of speaking with you, assisting when help was needed, extolling your achievements, and observing your transformation from tentative adolescence into poised and mature individuals embarking on an exciting and promising journey. The transition from high school to college or university, technical vocational institutes, the armed forces, or for some directly into the world of work, is an exhilarating and powerful leap. You have been nurtured by your family, your teachers, support personnel, and peer students and friends for the past 18 years. Your success to date has been the result of your self-motivation and dependence upon various support networks. In a few months, many of you will be living in a new city, meeting professors, instructors, teaching assistants, peer students, and developing new and hopefully meaningful friendships. While you are on the road in preparation of a professional career, it is imperative to remain optimistic and realistic. It is not easy to pick yourself up and retool after a professional reversal. However, attaining your goals does not come without a protracted struggle. Greatness does not appear without toiling long and hard. There will be good days and there will be disappointments along the way, but working diligently with grace and honor, stumbling yet picking yourself up to retool after a disappointment and asking for assistance will provide you with the lifelong tools needed to cope with the vicissitudes of life. An abbreviated but meaningful poem Life Steps by Catherine Pulsifer has helped to guide me back to my path after events have created seemingly unsurpassable challenges. This is the poem, very short. Our entire life is made up of choices. What we decide, the actions we take, the attitudes we display, all represent the steps of life. Sometimes we take two steps forward and one step back. Some of us take baby steps, some of us take giant leaps. But the secret is not to let that one step back turn into a failure. Learn from backward steps and keep on stepping forward in this dance called life. The passage of time is swift. Days and nights seemingly flow into months and years. One day you are 18 and what seems like a moment later you are 40. Be mindful. Be, be mindful about the fragility of time. Let your inner self guide you. Many opportunities open up within a short window. After thoughtful and deliberate consideration, rely on your intuitive sense whether to proceed. It is always wise to seek counsel from a trusted advisor when weighing the consequences of your decision. It is often better to, to attempt an endeavor than you are, that you are interested in pursuing rather than to than to let it slip away. Remember, nothing is guaranteed. All decisions possess some degree of risk. Do not waste time on pettiness and issues of low concern. Keep your professional goals and objectives at the forefront. Despite the myriad of distractions that appear enticing, never lose sight of where you want to land if, after completing higher education. Try to picture yourself in five, 10, and 20 years hence. Stay true to yourself. Momentary diversions will cost you time and perhaps compromise your pathway to achievement. 
Every day is a precious gift that should be spent wisely. Learn to work in a collaborative and productive manner with others. Sharpen your listening skills and remain respectful to individuals, even to those who attempt to thwart your intentions. Never sink to the level of an individual who is unscrupulous. Maintain your dignity and reputation at all times. On behalf of the Clara Barton faculty and, and community, we wish you a lifetime of excellent health, happiness, professional and personal success. We are proud of you and your parents, guardians, and extended family members for supporting and nurturing you. And I want every one of you to promise me that you will come back in December and for our alumni day, which is usually a couple of days before Christmas vacation, and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the class of 2020 and get them into shape. Thank you. I would like to call up Ms. Shondell Lawson, parent coordinator, to join me in handing out the Council of Supervisor and Administrators Parent Leadership Award. so much. Look look around and you see your kids. Put a smile on their face. president and will continue to serve in this role. She works tirelessly to make Clara Barton a great place. Miss Marcy Roberts, please come up. ceremony at um, Clara Barton and there were five winners of scholarships by scholarships I mean um, <clears throat> yes something was involved in these scholarships not just an award um, they did not get it so what I'm gonna do is just recognize them when I call please stand then we give one big round of applause to all of them um, so these are recipient of the Brooklyn girlfriends scholarship awards and um, First person is Deshaun Davis. Stacy Van Pierre. Keep standing, Van 
Let's keep standing for a sec. Um, Chara Lyons. Sabrina Moore. And Demaya Watson. Give it up for these lucky people. And um, <laughs> who got us an award? Thank you very much. Please, I've got to put note. I think there's something that says give this a fee, something from that um, little money you got there. All right. Um, Mr. Shaquille Hodge will now address you as a salutatorian for the class of 2019. Again, I would like to say good afternoon to all the wonderful parents, Dr. Foreman, faculty, teachers, advisors, and very near future graduates that are in attendance today. Your presence is greatly appreciated. Four years ago, I walked through the doors of Clara Barton, not knowing a single soul and experiencing confusion. I knew for sure that I was scared. And thus I embarked on a journey to conquer the unknown. And I want to walk you through that journey and leave with you a few gems that I picked up. On my first day, I was scared of the sheer magnitude of black people that I was seeing. <laughs> Y'all were loud, jumpy, annoying, and brilliant. Everything I could never see myself being, and it gave me a headache. <laughs> but you all taught me that we're all going to experience discomfort in some way, so we have to learn to deal with it as soon as possible. Fear nothing. You belong in every single room you walk into. If not, you wouldn't be there. If you feel uncomfortable, do the work to get comfortable. Be loud. Be brave. Be bold. Be you. People want to see you in your greatest light, but there are ways to be loud without screaming. Be loud and bold in the way you write, think, and dream. Be brave when speaking in front of others. Be you at all times. One of the most fulfilling friendships I've ever had started with three weirdos. They were so openly strange and I couldn't figure out why. They waited with me through my awkward phase and sat through all the silence to discover what was beneath. When I finally spoke, they listened. My voice mattered. I was observing them and waiting for them to act normal, but that time never came because they were strange through and through. I had to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and embracing my awkwardness. Everyone is weird, but only some are brave enough to reveal themselves. Not everyone is meant to be in your life forever, but that doesn't mean they're bad people. They were with me so that I could learn to fully embrace myself. My mother, Atona Hodge, <laughs> sacrificed her own education so that I could have mine, and for that I am eternally grateful. She's always put the needs of her children before her own, and I know many parents have done the same. So can we take a moment to thank all the parents in the room for all the sacrifices
my father, Paul Hodge, faced scrutiny from his family members for supporting my siblings and me. And part of me felt that I was to blame for the hardships he endured. Although I never spoke about it, the guilt consumed me. So I worked hard to make them proud. I strive for perfection as my way to repay them. But I allowed it. But I allowed it to consume me and I allowed my pride to prevent me from growing. Don't let the quest for perfection stop your journey. And then senior year, I failed the class. I allowed myself to get lazy. Class started at 8.05 a.m. and I strolled in at 9 a.m. I knew that the tests were on the last Wednesday of the month, so I made sure to fall asleep extra late on those days. I acted innocent, but I knew what I was doing. So sorry, Miss Nelson. And thank you for not allowing it to slide. This experience taught me to be proud of your accomplishments, but don't stop trying because you think you've made it. It's okay to relax, but don't become complacent. We have years of hard work ahead of us, so no one has made it yet. And I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Ellis, Mr. Gardner, Ms. Rayford, and Ms. Maxwell for investing in me. I also want to thank Ms. Finn, Ms. Isaacs, and Ms. Harris for consistently being available throughout my years at Clara Barton. And to my peers, you know yourself best. Don't let a piece of paper tell you that you did great. When I call out your future profession, I want you to physically stand in your purpose. Doctor. for yourself. One last thing. Repeat after me. I am great now, but I will always strive to be greater. Class of 2019,
us as a graduate, as a graduate to cherish the tradition, to cherish the tradition of Clara Barton High School for Health Professionals. I pledge, I pledge as a citizen, as a citizen to, work both alone and with many, to work both alone and with many, to improve my city, to improve my city and as an American, and as American to, obey my to obey my country's laws and to support and defend its constitution. And defend its constitution. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, I'd like to, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Miss Chara Lyons, the valedictorian. <laughs> valedictorian for the class of 2019, Miss Chara Lyons. Distinguished guests, assistant principals, faculty, staff, parents, guardians, and my fellow graduates of the class of 2019! <laughs> my name is Chara Lyons, and I am deeply humbled and honored to be the Clara Brown High School's 2019 valedictorian. I want to thank God today for pushing me every step of the way and giving me strength to continue. High school is hard. Exhausting even, but we stayed focused. Here's a taste of how it felt to me. My face pressed in my palm, I cry, I have made it. Pushing past years of doubt, hate, injustice, cruelty, and abuse. Raised in a conflicting atmosphere of hate and love, but I am free indeed. Free from the hate that consumes me. Free from the madness of those that have never sung their heart song. Free to be joyful, free to cry free to speak my mind, free to pray, free of judgment. It is all just a distant memory in the past. We made it past everything. We could have quit, so why didn't we? I have learned that adversity can be the best education. Most people think of strength as a physical characteristic, but I think of strength as being able to control your reactions and persevere through circumstances not in your control. Strength for me is my parents. Today, I acknowledge them as they are strong parents because of their past, present, and future. I can't say I would be as strong as I am without them. Although we may not see eye to eye on everything, I acknowledge you today for fighting and being champions for me. Mom, I saw you then as you effortlessly homeschooled Caleb and me. I saw you and Dad now as you come home after work every day tired, but pressing into the next day. Dad, I see you as a kind and respectful father to your children and mom. You lead our family. You lead our family like no one else, and you are patient with all of us. You only want the best for us. When Hurricane Sandy destroyed our home, and we were homeless and living in a hotel, no one complained. We just pushed forward. I am thankful to be alive and to have the opportunities I've had and the spirit within me to keep fighting. Barton has taught me to change my definition of beauty from one subjected to others' opinion to an independent, individual, dynamic journey. So to the class of 2019, I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but you don't need to prove yourself to anyone. You are all you will ever be, and that is more than enough. I look around, and I see a class of hardworking individuals who find purpose to their life and set goals in order to reach them. Remember that you deserve to take up space. For a while, I believed a place like Dartmouth was not for me. For one, it was a place filled with white rich kids whose moms and dads owned corporations. People asked me how I would ever pay for that. Um, I never thought I would get it. Um, let alone make friends. I doubted myself and my ability. But here I am. 
attending Dartmouth College. Where I will study biomedical engineering. I chose Dartmouth as I saw a student body passionate about learning, which I love. Um, I want to create medical technology that will help to service those in third world countries. I found my place despite the opposition. When people try to dissuade you from your dreams by telling you it's out of your league, you're not qualified. Rip up your application, burn your Dartmouth t shirt because you may never get in, don't listen to them. You're a fighter, a dreamer, and you will achieve the near impossible. <laughs> to my critics, bullies, and oppressors, you may have hurt me, but you can never take my essence and my power. Charis Aziel Lyons, my little sister, be bold. Never let anyone tell you you can't. <laughs> to Joshua Josiah Lyons, my little brother, be strong and continue in humility. To Caleb Israel Lyons, my twin brother, my day one, you have so much power within you. Use it to be great. Thank you to my Gateway family. We have struggled together. I have seen us over these four years become scholars willing to rise to any challenge we are faced with. And as a result, become better versions of ourselves. To my teachers, thank you. Ms. Hurley for believing in me and my potential, even as I was that freshman in US history and I'm sure you didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> Mr. Ellis for not giving up on me. Ms. Nelson for being a powerful, strong black woman I can look up to, pushing us through every wave. Mr. Gardner for seeing the need for a better future and feeding us. <laughs> to Ms. Hope for understanding. Ms. Isaac and Ms. Finn for always making time for me and being my guidance and counselors, always willing to talk when life became hard. I share this with all of you. We are the future and have the power to fight the injustices in this world by giving back to those disadvantaged in society. I want you to remember this. You are your best friend on your best day and your worst enemy on your worst day. You may not be able to change every situation, but you have the power to create a reaction and change your perspective. True greatness is finding the courage to be different and look upon the lowly, lonely, hurt, and harm to uplift them. When they see us, they will see greatness. It is in our roots, down into our veins. You tell them, Clara Barton is a school of kings and queens that will fight for success with dignity and fairness. This time we would have had the, um, the bar president, Mr. Eric Adams, um, giving a speech, but um, I guess he's running the city today. So he sends his regard to you guys. He has always been here with us, but this time he said he, he just couldn't make it, but he sent his regard. So we can give it, give it up for Mr. Eric Adams. <laughs> At this time, I'd also like to please help me welcome our own, huh, I guess you all know by now, for the last time to the stage, Miss Finn, to introduce our keynote speaker. Good morning, everybody. His passion was to fly. Stop, listen, I bet there's a plane flying overhead or you saw many planes coming in today. Our guest speaker has something or everything to do with the safety, security, and efficiency of that plane taking off and landing. Air traffic control, bird strikes, runway supervision, air rescue, 
and meeting the needs of customers with airport transportation, you know, like an Uber. So how did this all begin? First of all, he's a Clara Barton grad, class of 2009. started as an engineering major at the City University, City Tech, City College. He switched to pre-med, much to the, uh, his parents were very pleased with that, his Nigerian parents were very pleased with that. But then he followed his passion, flying. He graduated from Farmingdale State College on Long Island with a degree in aviation administration, magna cum laude got a pilot's license, journeyed from volunteer firefighter to dispatcher at the Republic Airport on Long Island. Promoted to supervisor, then operations manager, airport operations coordinator, and from 2016 until today, he is the operations group supervisor slash landside construction supervisor for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, right here at the Guardia Airport. Last year, he completed a Master's of Business Administration with distinction at the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Florida. Engineering, medicine, aviation, flying, why not? So, as his very proud counselor, allow me to introduce to our guest speaker, but no, he cannot get us a free ticket to Hawaii, <laughs> Ayobami Fatade. Hello, Clara Barton. faculty and staff, graduates, friends and family for graduates, thank you for the honor of spending this day with you. And congratulations to the class of 2019. God, family, everything else. This is how I've approached every new day since I first heard those very words. Everything that has happened up to this moment in my life has made me believe, more so than ever, that this is the right order to have. Almost getting bitten by a snake at the age of seven, and hanging by the fingertips staring down a dark well at the age of eight, and a few other accounts of memories from my childhood that remind me of God's presence in my life are evidence of this. Years since, till this very moment, has been nothing short of a miracle. This is why God is first, because He takes care of everything. Else. <laughs> family, my family has been there for me in more ways than I can count, and I have worked hard to maintain a love relationship with them. No matter what kind of relationship, it takes work. You shouldn't assume that your family is any different. Work on being a positive and active member of your family, and they will be there for you as much as you are there for them, if not more. <coughs> everything else. Everything else is simply just that. Everything else. Regardless of who, what, where, why, and how we choose to do things we do, as long as God is first, and family before comes before everything else, God will take care of everything, and your family will be there to support you in your times of need. I first arrived in the U.S. from Nigeria in 1999. I was nine years old. Prior to this period of time, I had never seen an airplane before. So imagine my excitement as we got to the airport, and my parents pointed to this gigantic airplane saying, that jumbo jet is going to take us to the U.S. There was only one thought running through my mind at that moment. Wow. I tried to picture how something so large could fly while also imagining what it would look like when we arrived at our destination. However, 
I found it hard in that moment to picture the U.S. looking any different than where I had been for the last nine years of my life. For in that moment, my imagination was limited by my experience. In pursuing your future aspirations, you will encounter new things, you will go to new places, you will face new challenges. But keep in mind to always re remain flexible to gaining new knowledge and venturing outside of your comfort zone so that you will never be in a situation where you find it hard to imagine something different from what you've known or where you've been. Nor find yourself in a position where your imagination is restricted by your level of experience. On the flight to the U.S., I was excited. So excited that I stayed up all 24 hours of the flight to Atlanta at JFK. I even asked flight attendants on the way out of the plane to allow me to see the cockpit and say hello to the pilots. And from that moment, I wanted nothing more than to be a pilot. Leonardo da Vinci once said, once you've tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skywards. For there you have been, and there you will always long to return. In my case, he was correct. However, my mother was a nurse, my father was a doctor, two of my brothers were engineers, my other two brothers were doctors, and my two sisters were nurses. My family was full of medical and engineering professionals, but none were suited to assist me in becoming a pilot. I didn't know it at that moment, but I had a goal without a plan. Some of you here today might find yourselves in a similar situation. And it's okay if you don't know at this very moment what your goals are or how to achieve it. As long as you keep an open eye, open mind, to try new things, and you put your best towards anything you try, those interests you now have will someday grow into new passions. And those passions will someday become new goals. Upon graduating junior high school, I was still dedicated to my goal to be a pilot and continued in my search for a plan to accomplish this. I would later discover in the years to come that while I had a one-track mind of being a pilot, my parents had a one-track vision of me being a doctor or engineer. My parents were very caring, and they wanted their absolute best for me. They always said, do something that will make you money so that you can live a comfortable life. I, on the other hand, believed that I could do something that made me happy while living a comfortable life. I was enrolled in a nursing program upon getting accepted to Harvard. This was their way of easing me into the medical field. After a week of suppressing my discontent, I was allowed to enroll instead to the Gateway Pre-Collegiate Program. Upon graduating from Clara Barton, I was instructed to apply to City College as an engineering major. I attended City College as an engineering major for the first year, again, expressing my discontent with the field. I was allowed to change my major to pre-med in my second year of college. I was forced to stay as a pre-med major the entire second year of college with the conditions that if I got an A in every class, I would be allowed to, I would, it would prove to my parents that I wasn't lazy and I would be allowed to change to an aviation major. My parents did not plan on keeping the last part of the deal. But I forced their hands when I applied, got accepted, and transferred to the Aviation Professional Pilots Program at Farmingdale State College. Finally, <laughs> finally, my goals had a plan, and I still had a drive to achieve it. As you venture out into the world, you will always have someone or something that will serve as a hurdle between you and your goals. My hurdle was my parents' determination and effort to have me pursue a career in medicine and engineering while I was determined to pursue a career in aviation. However, it is your first and only responsibility to remain focused and continue to scale every hurdle towards achieving your goals every chance you get. Reminding yourself every step along the way that giving up is never an option. My first year in the flight program was exciting but also terrifying. Everything I had learned in the past was tailored around the medical and engineering field. 
along with my lack of familiarity with the field, I was also disadvantaged in comparison to my classmates by the fact that they had some form of early exposure to the field of aviation through a relative that had previously or actively worked in the field. I was in uncharted waters without a paddle. And because of this, I spent every night after classes going over my notes and every week before an exam studying. I had never read or had to study so much while I was doing engineering or pre-med. However, this was my goal. It was a choice I made. And it was something I had wanted for so long and I had to fight for it. <laughs> Moving on to your prospective colleges, you will be faced with new challenges. You will also face the challenge of who, what, and where you spend your time. No one will be around to caution or restrict your time and use of it. This will be a newfound freedom. But make no mistake, it is a freedom that comes with a great responsibility. The most important responsibility being to ensure that no matter what you are doing or who you're doing it with, your time is valued and not wasted on the wrong things. This was a choice I had to make to succeed. Choosing to invest more of my time into building my weakness into a strength through spending more time studying and less of my time on other activities in that moment. For time is one of the few things in life that when lost is irreplaceable. Hence, your time is invaluable and should be treated as such. And you can achieve that by making sure that whatever it is you invest your time into, you do your best at it. Near the end of my first year in the flight program, I had to complete a solo cross country flight in order to do my check ride and earn my pilot's license. Such a flight was only authorized on a clear day with no showers, calm winds, pretty much what some might call a perfect summer day. I had to fly to three airports, the third being my airport of origin. After three hours of planning, every minute detail such as altitude, fuel, route, emergency landing, I was off to the first airport. The skies were clear, and I landed at the next airport without incident. On my way to the second airport, the weather had changed. It was so foggy that I couldn't, <laughs> that I became disoriented and I had to radio for assistance from the control tower. With the controller's help, I was able to reestablish my course and spotted a runway in the distance. A few hundred feet from landing, I realized the runway had a big X, meaning it was not safe to land. I was making the final approach to a closed runway, and the open runway was 50 feet to the left. Nonetheless, I was able to make the necessary corrections and land safely. After getting some fuel and waiting for the weather to clear up, I proceeded to take off and head back home. Rolling down the runway, I realized that I wasn't getting high enough, fast enough. Directly in front of me at the end of the runway were row of trees. I couldn't pull up any further without stalling and crashing, and my instructor always joked, saying, if, you, if you're ever flying towards anything, and you don't like what you see, just close your eyes. <laughs> I did exactly that for a split second, but the trees were where they were when I first closed my eyes. I must have cleared those trees within inches, but once in the air, it was smooth sailing back home. There is nothing more fear inducing than knowing that an error in what you're about to do, or currently doing, can result in your demise. I was not only expressing the fear of uncertainty, but also the fear of failure on that day. <coughs> Nonetheless, there is no sensation in the world like succeeding and conquering those fears. As you work towards your goal in life, not everything will go exactly as planned. 
as nothing about the flight that day certainly did. This experience of things not going according to plan can foster an environment to experience one or more fears, but rest assured that you have nothing to fear. Fear is normal. Fear is natural. But fear is also a thing to be controlled rather than having it control you. In the word of Robin Sharma, the fear we don't face become our limits. Therefore, you must be courageous and not close your eyes, but face your fears, so that you will be limitless in what you can achieve. In the moments when I found myself facing a row of trees with nowhere else to go but to confront the situation of fear, I relied on the knowledge and preparation that was given to me by my instructor to reach an outcome where I successfully completed the flight and returned home safely. All your years of hard barring, you have had several teachers or instructors. All your years on earth, your parents or loved ones have been your instructors up to this very moment. And you can rest assured that the knowledge and preparation that they have instilled in you over the years will guide you through the many years ahead, no matter the situation. A year in the flight program earned me over 100 hours of flight time, a private pilot's license, and the realization that I did not want to fly planes for a living, but rather as a hobby. At the end of my junior year in college, I had switched to an aviation administration major. This degree allowed me to be able to work at an airport and be around airplanes without having to fly. In the year 2009, I sat just like you are now next to my peers. It was truly a bittersweet moment as I wanted the ceremony to be over, but I knew I would also miss the great friendships, fond memories that I've shared with my friends, and some of the faculties that have nurtured me over the years. Fast forward 10 years later, and I am standing in front of you as an airport operations supervisor at one of the busiest airports in the region. In testament to the notion that you can do something you love, and live a comfortable life. I would like to extend a thank you to the faculty and staff, friends and families of graduates. You all contributed to the success of the graduates who sit in this very hall today. Thank you graduates for your time. And most importantly, congratulations to the class of 2019. Let's give it up for him one more time. Thank you. Um, is he flying out of here or is he going to be with us for a while? I don't know. Hey, that's my joke. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, I want to make a uh, recognition. Um, and it's actually linked to our keynote speaker. But you know, 22 years ago, we had a mem we lost a member of the Clara Barn family. Alistair Thomas had only completed ninth grade, but had garnered 22 credits at the end of ninth grade. Yeah, that's what I say too, wow. He was destined to be a talented musician, a skilled basketball player, and a great scholar. But during that summer, we lost him tragically. His parents found the strength to contain their grief, and for the past 18 years, they have offered a scholarship annually to a Clara Barton student who exemplifies some of the qualities and aspiration that their son possessed. Our keynote speaker, Mr. Ayabame Fatad, is, actually was the, 20, the 2009 recipient of this scholarship. Yes, give it up for him. And our salutatorian, Mr. Shaquille Hodge, who you just heard recently. Yes. And he's this year's recipient of that scholarship. Now, based on their performances here today, I'm sure Alistair's family, who is sitting with us, 
is feeling good and satisfied that their son's legacy will certainly live on in these two young men. Thank you. To show our appreciation to the family and to keep their son's name alive and current in Clara Barton, we have named the Guidance Office Room 205. It is now known as the Alistair Thomas Guidance Suite. Gentlemen, please put your hands together and help me recognize Alistair parents, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas. And I'll just say one thing about the Thomases while they're making their way up here. They, for all the years that they have been giving this um, scholarship, they have never sent it, mailed it, asked it to be delivered. They always come personally and hand it to the recipient. Give it up for the Thomases, please. Congratulations to the graduates of 2019. Uh, we consider it an honor to be part of the Clara Barton legacy. And uh, just two things I would like to say on behalf of my wife and family. And one is that uh, at the end of the ninth grade, Alistair had 22 credits. All of you students who are graduating now know that you should have at least 44 to graduate. So he was halfway there. And that's indicative of being an excellent student. And we will encourage you that this is just the beginning, this is not the end. And the second thing that I would like to do on behalf of my family, I speak to you as a parent, I speak to you as an assistant principal, and I speak to you as a pastor. The wisest man that ever lived said these words. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct the path. Thank you. Thomas is real brave, real brave, two real brave people, and I've been with Mr. Thomas for a number of years working together with him at the junior high school, Mario Levin. Okay, at this time, I would like to call uh, Ms. Jemina Salami. And most importantly, good afternoon, graduates of 2019. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I said good afternoon, class of 2019. Thank you. You worked too hard for this. Okay, let's get this started. It felt like yesterday, walking through the halls of Clara Barton High freshman year, nervous, and trying your best to remember your classroom number without taking out your schedule in the halls with upperclassmen being around. Heads up, for any incoming freshmen in the room, trust me, freshman finals do not exist. Yeah, it took four years and 1,383 days, huh? not including, not, wait, sorry, not, not excluding vacation days oh. off, of course, hard work, determination, lots of Quizlet notes to be sitting where you are today. Now give yourself a round of applause for one of the many great achievements you accomplished today by graduating. The unforgettable moments of Myerson. Have a great day, Barton. Miss Kavina screaming, get out the hall, students. Or Mr. Bedell screaming, floor spot. Has allowed us to grow and flourish throughout our academic success. Fast forward to senior year. We can all say the college deadlines was the most dreadful period of our senior year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The real MVP that we all, the real MVP award goes to Ms. J, we could definitely all say that, who assisted us throughout our college application, scholarship, who assisted us in our scholarships and applications even though we came before the deadline. Um, 
to our phenomenal hardworking guidance counselors who truly define, define the word guidance and guidance counselors. To the Finn file who woke me up every morning. Thank you, Ms. Finn. Um, and for the many scholarship and great opportunities, you will truly be missed. Ms. Isaac and Ms. Neverson. Can we clap it up for Ms. Isaac and Ms. Neverson? Who I always ran to whenever I was tired and I was drained out about the day. I always had Ms. Isaac here encouraging me with a word or singing a gospel song. I appreciate you. So let's talk about the majors. Barton majors. Who's in DA? Who's in LPN? with balancing college level majors and many vigorous academic classes, it's not easy because it made us have many gray hairs and late night studying, but thanks to our major teachers, parents, and God, most of us, most of us, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And God, most of us are graduating, not only with a diploma, but with a certification and a license. for allowing us to have this and setting us right in the right direction toward our careers. Thankfully to my major teacher, Miss Williams, who pushed me in my MA class to the fullest potential. And we were all certified 15 out of 17. Come on now. All right, raise your hand, seniors, if you were a victim of senioritis. Okay, that's all of us here. We can all attest to that but today is living proof we overcame that habit by remaining focused and to the many great teachers who motivated us to finish strong. For example, Dr. Holder in the end of the year biography, Miss Saipan with the motivational owl puns, but it definitely allowed us to be here today. Now let's go down memory lane with the festivities and the different things that we did. In September, we had Barton Feud of the Fits, Barton Back to Black, and Senior Mixer Jersey Night, where we laughed and bond as a whole. A memory we'll never forget senior trip at Honors Haven, upstate New York. We engaged in many group activities that were all hosted by Adrian. The end of steam days, for example, Barton Sweaty Day, Nerd Day, Flashback Day, Flashback Friday, Denim Day, and the many other days continued as well. Barton in Vogue, if you guys remember that, that was our prom night. And let me tell you, we definitely shut down prom for Brooklyn. and as well as the boat ride, which was a huge success, and yearbook signing, which made me a bit emotional because I know that I'm about to graduate high school. <laughs> All right, our senior memories and festivities wouldn't have been possible without Mr. Meyerson and senior advisor, Miss E. And additionally to the best parent coordinator, Miss Lawson. I also want to thank Mr. P, Ms. Maxwell, Ms. A, um, who else is here, Ms. Antoine, Mr. Ellis. Honestly, without you guys, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I thank you. Mommy, don't get jealous, I'm coming now. Okay, and my right hand man, Demaya Watson. I truly appreciate you, Vice President. Sakura Gallimore, Secretary, stand up. Deja Morris, Treasurer. And last but not least, Sakura Bradway, Gateway Rep. I'm almost done, trust me, I won't be long. Before I close, I just want to thank my parents, Mama, Papa, where are you guys? Okay. And I just want to be, I'm so thankful for being Haitian. Where's all my Haitian people? And I want to say this to the parents who do not speak English. If you speak Baba, I say Kibano, your bon education, because we're here because of you. The train doesn't stop here. It continues. And as the train has different stops, you will have different stops too. And as the train has delays, 
Sometimes you would have obstacles, sometimes you'll take L's, sometimes you'll take wins, but trust me, do not stop here. Pursue for higher education. And that is it, President signing off. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you. I now have to call up Ms. Um, your senior advisor, Ms. Escobar. Good afternoon. Class of 20. Let's take a look back. Sit right here, I'll tell you how I became the prince of the school right over there. Yeah, Brooklyn, New York, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, no cooling, and shooting some people inside the school. When I fucked the look out, they were up to no good. Started making noise in the neighborhood. I got in one little argument. My mom got scared. She said, You move into that school. Why don't you move into I was so far too long when it came in. The license face that class of 219, it was here. If anything, I could say that this guy was rare, but I thought, Nah, forget it. Your home, just go over there. I fall up to the school about 7 or 8. And I walked in. Miss Alec said, You're late. Looked at my kingdom. I was finally there to sit on my throne and the press a button. Oh, yeah. No, we 
We headed for the top, yeah. This is gonna never stop, yeah. We to the bottom, yeah. We hop up on the scene, yeah. Look what we achieved, yeah. Following our dreams, yeah. Now we're about to be to that team. In this math science, past all the ages, had to do it. I can't be left back, steady so hard on my head. Try to keep my mind on the best track, cause I'm making some blue friends. Like, I'm getting hard, but you gotta stay focused. My class graduating, just in case you ain't noticed. No, we're supposed to stay by my phone. I'm mad. 2019, me the class. Had to get to that bag. Leave them haters in the past. They talk that we laugh, cause they don't even know the hat. Yeah, you know that's a fact. Uh -huh. And we always attack. We run the school like some lies. Okay. We completed the task. Whole gang on the map. Okay. And we ain't turning back. 2019, where it's at. Cause we headed for the top. Yeah, this still never stop. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got this year on lock. Now we headed to the block. Yeah, we hop up on the scene. Yeah, look what we achieved. Yeah, following our dreams. Yeah, now we're about to be the this. They said we was gonna feel the we just did the opposite. I hate to talk it down, but they ain't. Even prominent, they stay in moderate while we stay in dominant. I probably stay on top of it, that's why they be watching us. But they ain't never stopping us. Opportunities popping up, cause we don't talk, we just walk, we just do. One step ahead, always trying to improve. They mad as hell, cause they know that we the truth. Had to succeed, failure wasn't an excuse.
Okay, Panther, I guess it's just you and me. of the Uniform Task Force work in collaboration with our school to empower students. The program is facilitated weekly by Officer Shamika Smith and Officer Marian Adams. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the two officers and also to recognize the eight seniors who have benefited and graduated from this program. Please stand as I call your name and audience. Please hold your applause until all the students have been called. Unique Rose, Kiana Sue Clark, Deja Morris, Cindy Phillip, Emily Wright, Jemima Salami, Rebecca John Baptiste, and Anya Rose. Ladies, congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Anderson, and congratulations to the recipient or the awardees. Okay. You know, on the wall next to the guidance office, there's a sign that says, success is a journey, not a destination. I think that's a very applicable saying to you graduates here today. In 2015, Ms. Finn and I selected students who would apply to Clarabon High School. 
In September of that year, we had an assembly and we looked down on the 300 lost, nervous, and confused souls whom were selected to attend Clara Barton. That's you. It's been four years, and as I stand here and look at the successful 200 of the 300, I say a hearty, well done. You have made me spin and me proud to have selected you. But back to the saying, I know everyone sees today the diploma, the cap and gown, the awards, and how beautiful and successful you all look today. But this is the destination. What about the journey or the road you traveled to get to this point? It brings to mind a song by reggae artist Buja Banton. It says, it's not an easy road. Many see the glamour and the glitter and they think a better rose. Who feels it knows. All right, all right, all right. You get the point. I stopped singing before I cleared the auditorium, you know. But seriously, I know that it wasn't always an easy road for all of you to get to where you are today. There were hills and valleys, hurdles and stumbling blocks along the way. But you overcame them. Even the honor roll student, the honor roll student, valedictorian, salutatorian, advanced region students, and all the labeled bright students, they had their hurdles to overcome in order to maintain expectation. I want to take a few minutes to address some of these obstacles that many of you face and recognize a few individuals who did not allow these hurdles to hold them back. First of all, it's not easy to try to adjust in America when English is not your primary language. We just haven't reached the maturity level here in this country where the ability to speak more than one language is seen as an achievement. Yet. We have many of you who, despite being pushed into ESL classes throughout your school life, are not only graduating here today, but with top honors. To everyone in this category, I said well done and congratulations. <laughs> representing, representing this group is a young man from Haiti. He came to this country three years ago speaking virtually no English. He said he watched movies with closed captions and read a lot to learn English. He said that even when people laughed at him when he spoke broken English, it only made him more determined to learn the language. He was also fortunate to find a couple of friends here at Clarabon who he knew from back home and went to school back home with. They helped him to adjust to the new culture. I asked him what advice he would give to new immigrants, students, and he said that they should read a lot don't be upset or turned off when people laugh at how you speak. And most importantly, he said, you have to think in English because he discovered that he was thinking in Creole and that impeded his learning English, his learning English. He made it and he's among us today as a 2019 graduate. Please give it up for Mr. Michel Bello. Thank you. To many of us, homelessness is represented by people begging on the street or sleeping on the subway. It's hard to imagine that some of our graduates here today have experienced some form of homelessness, and yet they have the perseverance to be among the graduating class of 2019. Congratulations to them. The young lady, the young lady representing this group came to Clara Barton in ninth grade from the Caribbean, I think it was Castries. Um, in less than a year, she moved to Maryland. She came back to New York after a year, and in February of that year, her home got destroyed by fire. She and her mother lost not only their shelter, but all their personal belongings. They have since then been relocated three times by the city. Throughout all this, this young lady took 48 classes and passed all 48 without any failures or repeats. I asked her how she maintained focus, and she said, my mom. That's why I call her super mom. Give it up for Chloe Frederick.
one love, and as my granny always say, walk good. Thank you. At this stage, sorry. At this stage, I'm going to ask the graduates to please stand.
Joseph. Samantha Joseph. Gordon Chugo. Opiemi Juliet.
of 2019, please rise. Congratulations, we did it, guys. My last announcement to you, please excuse this interruption. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left by the power vested in you by the New York State Department of Education and the New York State Board of Regents. Why not say what I say every day at 9 p.m.? 
here we go. Good morning, Clara Barton. Today is Thursday, June 27, 2019, and now the morning announcements. Just a few brief and announcements. The announcement. First, congratulations to the class of 2019. You guys did it. Second, if you like that video presentation, you'd like to see it again, please check out our YouTube page. Like and subscribe. It lets us know you like it. Uh, a big shout out, by the way, Mr. Pentagon right over there, helped me out with that video, and Jason Orsell over here. Without those guys, it wouldn't have gotten done. Finally, I'd like to remind our guests that they can meet their graduates outside in front of the auditorium after all the graduates have exited. The graduates will be exiting from the side exits. Everyone will use the same exits to leave. You will not be able to leave from the lobby. You will have an opportunity to see school administrators, teachers, staff members, to say any last goodbyes, take photos, selfies, snaps, you know, post on the ground to get the likes up. So, one final time. Follow you with me. Those are all the announcements for today. Make sure you go to all your classes. The Haven Hallways and...